coverage and following racing. I uh, had a neat, neat thing. It's funny you mentioned Billy Pouch. Uh, when I was up at Pennsylvania, uh, Williams Grove for the heat races, I traditionally stand on top of the Raymers transporter. I go back with Fred and Deb and the boys and everyone, and he's always like, come on up. So I do. And I found myself in a very weird spot, Ashley. Three of us standing on top of that truck. Fred Raymer, Billy Pouch, and me. And it's like, man, there's one guy that doesn't belong in this conversation. I didn't get to talk to the two of them <laughs> together all that much, but I did get to talk to Billy Pouch. And boy, I'm telling you what that is. That is amazing stuff. It really is. Fun, fun stuff when you see the legends. And then when you get to hang out with them, that, that, makes, that makes their legendary status. It even brings it home. It does. And just to hear their stories, you know, they've always got something to share. And it, it just makes you go, wow, like what it would have been to, to see that moment that they talk about. There's always such great stories that come out of it. Such great stories, that's for sure. Some of those great stories with Billy Pouch can be found in our archives because during uh, one of the world finals a couple of years ago, we sat down with Billy Pouch at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Another guy we sat down, and you can find it by going on YouTube, typing in Billy Pouch Wing Nation. Another one you can type in is Bobby Allen with Wing Nation. So you can do that or you can just stay right here because Bobby is our guest here on Wing Nation. Before we get to that interview, though, let's take a look at this. It was from the Devil's Bowl, Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, the Winter Nationals, Dylan Westbrook with the lead. Here comes J.J. Hickel looking for his third straight win down in Mesquite, Texas. Our buddy, our buddy Brian Hulbert with the call on Racing Boys and Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Deft-Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. J.J. Hickel swept the weekend here in March. He's going to try to add a third one here. He's come after Westbrook to the front straightaway. Dylan's going to hold on to it by two-tenths of a second. Dylan Westbrook, but not for long. J.J. Hickel down to the bottom. You've got a new leader to the back straightaway. That deaf defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf, the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Team Dryden. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Truth. Let's go to the Hercules Tire Hotline. Joining us from up in the great state of Pennsylvania, team owner of Shark Racing and that Dryden team that we all love so much. Bobby Allen joins us. Hello, Bobby. Welcome in to Wing Nation. Well, hello. Thank you. Bobby, as we near the end of this season, kind of give us a an assessment of how things have gone for shark racing this year for your boys. Well, I, I always look at the good side. I think I think it, it really went well, more than more than maybe some of our results. Uh, Logan did a, uh, a great job. We did a great job actually with Jacob to learning new racetracks and things he wasn't good at. We were way better in California and, and Skagit at the end of the year. Some of the short tracks, we kind of fumbled around a little bit on the big track. Logan was exceptionally good. But anyway, we figured out a few more things to get to there. And this year they got a little bit crossed up on setups and also our motor program was good, but yet we learned a lot more there because I could never run the motors at the right time I felt to run the motors we had. And uh, when they came back to uh, Pennsylvania, they've been suffering at Williams Club a little bit. Well, definitely Logan was right there to win both races, Port Royal. Logan was right there to win. And, you know, it presumed it looked like he was going to win, but you don't win until you win and you get the money. Uh, that lap car, they didn't throw the yell in time. He got crashed there. Jacob looked like he had a good second. So at the end of the race, he moved his wing back, and he couldn't get his wing back the other way. And he was pushing. So he was really happy. So we're happy with the end-year results looking into next year, yes. Bobby, we've kind of watched you do this whole World of Outlaw Tours these last seven years. And we, were, we talked to Logan about this a few weeks ago. Seven years ago, you guys were piecing things together to try to make things work. And now you're a team that is at the front every single weekend. Did you expect everything to kind of come full circle this quickly? And are you pleased with the direction that you guys are headed in? Well, I'm definitely pleased about it. And actually, I thought we'd have it sooner than this. But, but we still are pleased. We were hit and miss in the beginning. And it does take what I figure a good five years. Uh, and one way they're lucky, I'm a guy that's been on the road, raced before, and done this my whole life. 
but it takes you're not going to have a new team all the way come together and do it this fast no but you got it you got that's why you get a new driver goes with a team like the 41 car or, or casey kane's team that they already know what to do at the racetracks and then the driver can adapt faster that it, and he's already been a trained driver that goes good somewhere else but no i'm really pleased with what we've gone what the boys have done because the very the very first day i've been teaching them to do how to do this without me and now I think they're pretty well getting closer and closer to that because when I try to tell them something, they don't want to listen. Well, is is, is that because they know what they're doing or is that because they're just kids these days? Well, part of it's because they're kids, but they are starting to know what they're doing. I mean, yeah. definitely I try to put them in a direction to go and they don't want to admit it that week, but, but a couple of weeks later, they run that kind of direction and they seem to be better. So I'm, they're closing in. They're getting, they're getting where they won't need me, uh, but they're doing a good job. Bobby, you talked about being on the road. You've done it all your life, but there was a, a hiatus there that it, that you've had, you know, until the boys started racing again. What has it been like being back on the road, traveling with the team and being such an ample part of it? Because you do know what it's like to be on the road and what it takes to, to make the entire season happen. Well, there's all kinds of people. I'm one of them kind of people that like being on the road, like being racing, uh, going to different places. I call myself an addicted race car gambler because we, uh, we get sponsored some money, we charge, I, I, I charge, everybody, let, they all like me, so they let me charge uh, to the hilt with everything, then I hope I can pay it back by the end of the year, and, and uh, with their running, and then be able to do it. There you go, there you go. Bobby, one of the things you've talked about, you just talked a little bit to us about a five-year vision, and you've talked also in the past about, you know, having to know what's going on a couple years down the road, is as we sit here in 2021, um, you know, I, I mean, obviously world finals and some other races are coming up, but, but what do you think we need to look at as we look at two years down the road, three years down the road with, with where the world of outlaws and what racing is going on with sprint cars? Well, that's what, that's what I do. I'm pretty good about looking definitely two years. And then you try to look further. You like to see where it's going. What, okay, I got, do I got to get ready for this? Do I got to get ready for a, a change going on? I hope it's not electric motors yet, but do I got to, do I you know, where are we going? Just like right now, uh, by looking ahead and getting the stuff we got right now, they're in a little dilemma with all these parts. So I'm lucky I did look ahead because we've got stuff now to even start the year with if we, uh, uh, if we're short on money or whatever. But, but five years from now, I look at sprint car racing, unless uh, this COVID thing gets out of the way and with the dirt vision and the things they got going on now, I see it not, getting nothing but be uh, better. And people always said to me, boy, racing was good back in your day, wasn't it? I said it was good, but it ain't nothing like it is now. Then when they're, they're running them races, the top five guys are on kill. The next five guys are on kill where they're running. These guys run hard and tough. They, nobody ever raced this hard. It's so true. And, and you know, you raced in an era with Kinzers and the Paul Pitzers and just those strong guys. And now we talk about how deep the World of Outlaws chart is and how – hard it is to win a race with the world of outlaws and logan being in the top three in points the last three years how much do you still wish that you as a, the, the driver that we know as scruffy allen how much do you wish you could be back out on that track with those boys well i, I well i i mean i probably would like that but i still i mean i'm where i can't change my age so you know, I am what I am, so I'm, I'm glad I can do it through them. Bobby, hang in there. Everyone else, stick around. We've got more with Scruffy with Bobby Allen in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. Ring Nation presented by Sage Fruit continues on. The Hercules Tire Hotline is where we're going. Bobby Allen, Scruffy, owner of that Dryden team up in Pennsylvania, joins us. Bobby, I wanted to pick your brain just a little bit on another topic. We, you, you, you follow some other forms of motorsports. You, you, of course, grew up in karting, and you, you, you aspire to be Indy car racing. I want to talk about Kyle Larson, okay? Uh, as a guy that watches some NASCAR, as a guy that competes with him in sprint cars, how good is Kyle Larson? Well, I've raced a long time, won a lot, lot of racers. Kyle Larson doesn't even know how good he is. He, he's one of the best guys I've ever seen 
run a race car, adapt to every race car there is. And in today's world, everybody has good stuff. The NASCAR guys got good stuff, the modified. I know he gets in a good car, the sprint car. Yes, he's definitely almost a superhuman, and he don't know, he don't realize he's got, um, excuse me, Sweet said the best. When they ran them midget wing carts, Larson could see way ahead. His vision makes everything slow motion to him when he races, and it has to be something like that. Just like you're talking about me, my vision is I can see ahead on where I'm going, where to be to keep going. Well, uh, and other people's got a, a better vision on when they want to do a business or, or whatever they do or draw, make any drawing. Well, Larson's one of them that's got a vision that when he runs, he thinks everybody should be doing what he's doing, don't understand why he can't. So I think it's way better. In fact, I was going to tell him when I see him, when he first started, when he started running NASCAR, I'd watch NASCAR again because I'd, um, you know, it'd be fun to see him get up there and beat these guys. Well, now through the luck of the stuff and the draw, he's got a team that is right there to win. He was good before, but now he's, he's really excelling. So I'm, I'm going to actually tell him, I said, you know what? I'm kind of starting to get bored of watching NASCAR because he wins every race. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. And you're right. He doesn't realize what he's doing at the moment. And I kind of want to go back to a time we chatted once before, Bobby, talking about the IndyCar stuff. You said that back then you wish you would have realized more what the sprint car world was doing for you, but you were so laser focused on making it to IndyCar. Now that you're back on the road and getting to, to share the stories with people that come up and know the old Scruffy, has it kind of rekindled a fire in you to be able to relive those stories that maybe you kind of missed out on in the moment? Well, I don't try to look in the past. Uh, well, I, I did say this uh, too. I was lucky. I wanted to be a race driver. Naturally, you want to go to the biggest and best, but I was lucky to be able to live my life and do it the way I wanted to do it. And that was racing. Uh, so I never, I never made it to Indy, but I still, I love what I do. I mean, it's all, I love what I do and I'm loved that I can do it through the kids and, and uh, whatever, whatever there. Bobby, your story fascinates me because it ties in a little bit with another neat era of racing. I think one of the neatest parts of racing uh, across America was when the Alabama gang, Bobby and, and Donnie Allison and, and Red Farmer and those guys, I could not imagine what it was like to be at a racetrack and see those guys come down pit road. You actually spent time with the Allisons, and you you both were born, you both were Florida. They went to Birmingham. You went to Pennsylvania. Was there ever consideration of you to go to to go to Alabama or to do something else, or were you just destined to go to Pennsylvania? Well, they're a few years ahead of me, but they would go to Alabama to run their modifieds, run stock cars, and go run NASCAR. My my goal was the time because I grew up with Jim Rathman to go to Indianapolis. Uh, I'm probably glad I didn't because I I look at all the pictures and I look back at the guys were my like heroes back then, Herder Bees, Pernelli Jones, Boyd, all them guys, and their heads stuck two foot out of the cages. You were lucky you didn't get killed right then. So I'm lucky to live what I do and what I've got, got done. There's no doubt about it. It's so true. Bobby, being in Florida, what made you come to Pennsylvania? What made you kind of land there and really get into the sprint car scene? Well, Jim Rathman had a shop down there, and my dad was a racer to, around Bill France and stuff, and they bought these things called half midgets. And we'd race him, and Jim Rathbun was the one that sold and ran him. So I, through him and looking at Indy cars, the stuff that made me want to do it. And at that time, you had to be 21 years old. Uh, that was a step. Midget sprint cars, that was a stepping goal to go to the Indianapolis car. But you had to be 21. Well, I, I wasn't 21 yet then. And when, since the first year I got to be 21, um, I went and ran four months. What well, rained out about every week. They only ran once a week. I could hardly make a living because I was already making a living racing the cars in Pennsylvania. And I didn't like being told what I could do and couldn't do. So then I just went back to running sprint cars and, and doing it. At that time, you had to, you know, USAC was a deal and the whole thing. So I went back to running uh, my sprint cars around there and, and, and making a living at it and doing it. Bobby, this year when we rolled into Knoxville, you guys rolled out some throwback paint schemes. Uh, just uh, beautiful looking cars. What was that like for you, not only maybe in the design, design and development, but see those cars on the racetrack? Well, it, it was nice. I actually think it meant more to the boys. They, they, they felt like, you know, they were, uh, uh, you know, it made them feel like maybe they were part of me, part of that way there. Me, uh, I'm kind of one that ain't the best on that stuff. My deal was, naturally, as you know it, when we first built a car, we painted it all up, and I'd actually win the car show but once we got running. Uh, then at whatever it was, I'd buy pistons or cranks or whatever. I, I didn't care about it because I didn't have big sponsors. 
was what I thought was pretty is when the car was passing everybody going down the straightaway. You could sit there with all the chrome on if it wasn't one of the races, the heck with it. But now today, you keep everybody happy. You got to have it all shined up and really looking good. But no, they did a good job with the car. That's how they looked back then. So a lot made a lot of people from that era happy. I can tell you that. It's true. It's definitely cool to see that car run out. And then, of course, the helmet, the suits, everything that they put together. It was awesome to see it at Knoxville. Bobby, looking ahead, you know, you talked about a two year plan with motors and all that. What do you what do you want from these boys? You know, what what do you want their legacy to kind of live? Is there you want a championship in the next two years? What do you see for shark racing? Well, definitely for shark racing, naturally, I want them to win more races. I do see a championship. I, I mean, naturally, so does the other teams, but uh, and, and it, it will be that way. But I'm actually working hard for us to get ready now for next year that I see uh, that maybe we've got a big possibility of a championship, the best all I've ever had, as long as we got the money behind us to do what I need to do. I actually figure it's going to be an awesome year. So does the other teams, but we'll find out at the end of the year. And that's exciting stuff. It really is. And, of course, the partnership with Drydean, a big part of that. And we love our partnership, and we're so glad they're involved with you guys as well. Bobby, always a pleasure. Great catching up with you here on Wing Nation. All right. Well, thank you. There we go. Scruffy Bobby Allen joins us here on Wing Nation. Stay with us. Our Tweet Your Seat, Tweet of the Week, and a lap around the sprint car world are coming up. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. We're back. You're watching Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. And it is time for the Tweet Your Seat Tweet of the Week. And it's Brian from Lincoln Speedway. And he asked, was there really any doubt? He had a 50-minute drive to Lincoln Speedway. He drove on wet roads at 6 p.m. Motor heat was at 719. And he said, I never hesitate to head to the track because history tells me they will race. Snow, sleet, rain. Lincoln Speedway is no sad <laughs> They've got a reputation, and that's a good <laughs> reputation, and they are on the countdown now for next season, for the uh, the icebreaker. Icebreaker. Yes, the icebreaker <laughs> countdown has begun because, well, they wrapped up their season. I love the excitement of Lincoln Speedway, and Brian, we appreciate that. Let's take a lap around the sprint car world. There is a series that we don't spend a lot of time talking about, the Bandit Outlaw Sprint Series. Now, this is an open engine series. 15-pound weight, no adjustment on the wing. Those are some of the technicalities. They raced this season with 14 races, and some of those races were at Texas Motor Speedway, including this weekend where they raced right alongside NASCAR, and actually they did a little bit of a throwback paint scheme deal. It was so cool to see those NASCAR paint schemes. There was Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson. So many good schemes came out of that. Your Friday night winner was Dylan Westbrook, and Saturday was Roger Crockett in his Jimmy Johnson paint. That was so cool. I love that it they did that and cool. tied it right back into NASCAR for sure. Speaking of tied into NASCAR, well, Tony Stewart is part of NASCAR. He's also part of sprint car racing and now NHRA drag racing, apparently. The 2021 season for the madman, Kerry Madsen. He started the year with Mike Marshinger up in Pennsylvania, picked up a win in April at Bridgeport, but soon left the team. Ashley... He didn't go. He didn't go anywhere except to Victory Lane when he left Central Pennsylvania. You know, we talked to him so many times about this deal with Tony Stewart, and honestly, he still hasn't really told us. You know, he was racing. He was week to week. Then he got a fire suit. He's still not really sure. Um, he's got six wins: two at Knoxville, including the All Stars; two at Jackson Nationals. He swept the prelim night. One at 34 Raceway and one at Port Royal Speedway with the World of Outlaws for the Nittany Showdown. Um, we talked to Kerry when he was here, and he's like, listen, I'm just happy to be in this seat. But if Tony's going to NHRA, I think that seat might be Kerry's for quite some time. Well, I think so, too. And as long as he keeps winning, um, boy, I'm That's telling you right. what, that is that is amazing. What a resurgence he's had. And it couldn't happen to a finer guy than Kerry Madsen. That's turn number two. Let's head down the back straight away into turn number three. A racing family from western Pennsylvania, the Lynches. Ed Lynch Sr., 47 wins at Lernerville. Multiple wins everywhere else. 
his wife, Jean. She is a Hall of Fame career. She's a Sprint Car Hall of Famer for her career in promoting races. Then there's Ed Lynch Jr. With only 111 wins and four championships at Lernerville, 235 Sprint Car wins for the Apollo Rocket, including a Don Martin Memorial Silver Cup and Ashley, the Lynch family continues on with the next generation. Yes, that legacy still lives with Cy Lynch. Uh, nine wins this season, four at Lernerville, two at Tri-City, add Mercer, Latrobe, and Pittsburgh to that list. Quick time led a bunch of the Don Martin's Memorial Silver Cup. Just couldn't get it done, but absolutely awesome family. Yes, they are. Fantastic. That's turn number three. Let's head to turn number four. Fast on dirt. Sprint car racing also very, very strong in the Ohio area. The Fast Series started as the Fremont Attica Sprint Tour, rewarding drivers from those two racetracks. The All-Stars kind of expanded, and the Fast Guys said, well, we want to race a little bit more like a tour, so that was moved to more of a touring series. And in 2021, they had 18 races in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, and West Virginia. Yes, and some guy named Cale Conley <laughs> from West Virginia ended up picking up the championship, which paid $10,000. Um, the Dry Dean Salute to Champions. You can find that this year on our social media pages for sure. But really cool deal they've done up there with the Fast Series. Really is great stuff. And yes, the Dry Dean Salute to Champions all during this offseason on our social media channel. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. I'm not ready yet. Hey. All right, I'm ready now. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? I just saw it. <laughs> I got it, I got it. I just stopped by to pick up my sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is what it looks like when you do yeah. it. Ta -da. <laughs> Take a deep breath, okay. count to five. It's like running across a rhythm section at a motocross track. <laughs> Mine was perfect. Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Continuing on, the Hercules Tire Studios is where I'm at. Ashley is in the Lethal Chassis Studios in Pennsylvania, but Ashley, you're not going to be up there in Pennsylvania for long. Won't be long. And all dirt roads and all paved roads and all every road is leading to Charlotte. You guys will be you guys will be back here in the in the uh, the, the Wing Nation hometown pretty soon. Yes, I'll actually be there next week for the World Short Track Championships, kicking off the week of racing. Um, of course, so much going on Tuesday at Cherokee Speedway after the World Short Track Nationals. Then Tuesday, Wednesday at Millbridge before we roll into the NGK NTK World Finals, November 4th through the 6th. Well, the best part about the whole deal is that we're going to have Dry Dean Wing Nation Friday and Saturday in the Midway area. Um, Ashley, going to be you and Aaron, so it's going to be an all ladies edition of our Wing Nation Road Show coming up at the World Finals. It's true, and you'll never know what to expect. You will not know what to expect, so you better be there, that is for sure. Speaking of not knowing what to expect, we appreciate Bobby Allen joining us here on the program. More important, though, than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Street.